I was talking about. Um, I sent you all updates, so you'll see the updates. But like I said, on your cell phone is going to be kind of hard to read, but we're going to get to the juicy part. So there was a couple part points in there where I asked her questions, and she got real testy. And I told the judge, I said, she's a hostile witness. <laughs> she's a hostile witness. She's not answering the question. And so then he told her, he said, look, when you're in there, you have to answer them. The thing is, when... You have a witness on the stand. I can ask him any question that I want. And, of course, he's trying to limit and restrict what type of questions that I can ask. Mm -hmm. You know the game. Right. Because as soon as I'll, because uh, Muskogo, you weren't in here, but I'll say it again, and this is for you all to know for future reference. As soon, the second or third question I asked my mother was, hello? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your line? No, I thought I heard, uh, like, another call coming in. Oh. Yeah, it was. It, it was a call, but we don't know where it was coming from. Oh, I thought it was uh, his line. No, nah, that's not. I'm hearing it on my end. That's oh, the okay. donut eaters. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, um, so you know, that's probably third parties jumping in on one, one what's happening. So, um, what happened was uh, the second question I asked her, are you familiar with the United Nations? So before she could even say the judge says, we're not talking about the United Nations, and I said, why? This is not, that's not relevant. I said, so I whipped out the card. I said, yes, I sent my mother a postcard from the United Nations post office in New York, and you're telling me it's not relevant? <laughs> but she says but she says in the court transcript, I'm delusional. Oh, he thinks he's a chief or something. I said, really? But I sent you a postcard when I was at the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues in New York. And I'm on the list intervention because before I crossed into the vessel, I told him because they, the, the duty council tried to make, oh, he's with those free men on the land. I said, objection. We have nothing to do with them. Our nation is at the Kata Nation of Yamasi Moors. We're internationally recognized by the, the governments of the United States and Canada and the United Nations. And, and I presented our flag in the court, and I stepped through into the bar with our flag mm -hmm. and laid it out on the table. <laughs> and he said nothing. And then he said, well, I, admit, I guess that your headdress is a part of a religious attire, so um, I'm going to allow this for now, right? And I just, like, ignored him. I said, dude, you already accepted our flag. <laughs> Once you cross, we cross into the bar because if, cause they don't find no flags in the courtroom. Right. Just the, just the crest of Elizabeth. Okay. So then, so then it's like, well, under the international law of the flag... Once the vessel comes through, or once I come into a vessel with a flag, if the captain of the ship doesn't want to do business, then he's not supposed to allow me to come up in there. Mm -hmm. But what did he do? He let me Make come sure. up in there. <laughs> now, did he or did he not mess up? Yeah, he messed he up. Messed up. <laughs> so, and he's sitting there taking all this with our flag laid out right there. So when I'm talking... Uh, I asked more questions, and then eventually he didn't. That they they started arguing about whether the questions were relevant. He said, "You can't ask questions." He said, "If you do ask, if you can't enter evidence, if you enter, try to enter evidence, then I'm going to seize. We're going to stop the questioning." So then I started asking more questions, going through the uh, through the transcripts. Uh -huh. So. Uh, eventually what happened, he didn't like one of the questions I asked and said, that's it, and had her step down. So when she stepped down, um, he, had inquired, he had inquired, okay, um, uh, what is it that you want to do um, with regard to um, entering evidence? And I said, well, if I enter, he said, you know, you can come sit up in the box and enter evidence. Right? You can stand affirmed or you can swear oath and you can enter evidence that way. And I said, I said, yeah, I want to enter evidence. And I said, and then I asked him, I said, am I going to be violating my indigenous rights by sitting up in that box? He said, well, I can't advise you. I can't give you advice. All I can say is that you have the opportunity to enter evidence by sitting up in the, uh, or standing affirmed or swearing an oath you know, on the Bible or whatever, and I was like, well, uh, I can't do that because I would be violating Article 15 of the International Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. 
And so then afterward, I forget what happened. Me, we, we got we got it. In, we got into a heated argument. And then he turned around and said, okay, you come back. Because by that time I was done, well, he cut me off. But by that time it was about 5 to 3. He said, come back at 3.15 and then we'll deal with stuff. He said, I have another matter I have to attend to. So he was gone for about 20 minutes. He left the courtroom and was gone for about 20 minutes. So when he came back in and did some other cases and then said, okay, because what happened originally when I got there at 9.30, they switched the courtroom from 2.12 to 4.13. Hmm. So when we first went in front of them, what he was doing was go going through the list of people to see, try to pace how he's going to do stuff and say, okay, if this looks like it's going to be long, we'll save that. The ones that look like they can get done quicker, we'll go ahead and do those. So he did it totally whack. Mm hmm so he was like, okay, you want to do this? I said, yes. I said, let's do this right now. I said, why do we got to come back at 2 o'clock? Right. And then I told him, and I said, look, you guys said on the order 212, then you turn around and to switch the courtroom to 413. I get to the courthouse, the court, the, the, um, the, uh, on, they have a big, uh, L, uh, big, uh, what do you call it? LCD, uh, computerized board with all the cases. Right. So I'm standing there for almost five minutes trying to find it. It's not there. So I said, let me ask this clerk. I bet she can find it. Sure enough, oh, uh, room 413. So now I go up to room 413, and so uh, I explained this to him that when I came, it was 212 to 413. I said, you guys got something to hide. I said, you don't want the people in here hearing what I got to say. He said, no, we're not hiding anything. You know, that's not what we're doing. I was like, well, then why is it that the courtroom was moved from 212 to 413 if the order said to go come back to 212 on November 28th? Mm hmm Right, so so that was it. So we had to we had to come back at uh, two o'clock. So two o'clock, I cross examined her until three. He stopped me from questioning her. Then about twenty after three, he turned around. So he turned around because what uh, what happened was when we broke till two o'clock, I went to the library, went on Facebook, tell everyone I just you know, let people know what was going on. Mm -hmm. So when I came back at two, cross examined her till about three, then 25 after three, he comes back in. So then we, I bring my papers forward. Okay, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, um, I will, uh, I want to give evidence. And I said, well, am I going to violate my rights by doing so? He said, no. He said, but this is how it is. He said, this is our home. This is our house. You do what we say in here. Mm. And, and so I'm sitting there listening to him, mm -hmm. and then I said, well, okay. Um, he said, you know, we could do a Bible or a Quran, and I said, no, I'll swear in our Constitution. He said, no, I'm not going to accept that. I said, okay, well, then I'll swear on the holy tablets. <laughs> <laughs> Did he allow that? Um... He, well, here, here, you haven't laughed yet. I've, 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 I've uh, what I need to um, bring up is, um, let's see, did he say that first? No, he, yeah, he said that first. First, he, what happened was before I got to Holy Tablet, mm -hmm. he asked me, he asked me, um, uh, I brought up the issue with the judge, the previous judge not being down when she continued the order, right. and I said that was fraud. I said she was in gown, so the order's null and void. So then I brought up the then I brought up the issue of I said, uh, look, I have the Queen's oath, and she swore to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel, which is a sixteen eleven King James Bible. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, he asked me, do you have a sixteen eleven King James Bible? Then I pointed at him. Now I'm standing up, pointing at him, right, with one finger. And I'm saying, well, you just said earlier that this is your courtroom, this is your house, this is your rules. How mm -hmm. come you don't have a 1611 King James Bible? Ah, <laughs> got him. And I said, now because you brought this up, that means that the witness's testimony is fraudulent mm -hmm. because she was sworn in. That means this whole proceeding is fraudulent. What was she sworn in on? What? She swore in on the 
for, you know, in the Bible, a new inter- international version, but it's not oh. a King James. It's not a King James. Or, <laughs> okay. or 1769 or 1789. Okay. So, right then, I caught him. Okay. Got him. Because... Because he, he fell for debate. He was like, well, do you have a 1611 King James? Now, he's a Queen's agent. <laughs> so, who, so who's his first obligation to? Queen. The queen. So now, if he's a Queen's agent asking me to produce a 1611, and he's a Queen's bench judge, probably been doing it for 25 or 30 years, maybe longer, how is it that now he's saying, well, do you have a 1611? Because he was, re- he, in other words, if I had it, he would have swore me in on it. Okay. Yeah, but he don't have it. Okay, so now he's a judge, Queen's agent, he'll have a 1611, and he uh, accepted my statement because I said, I have the Queen's oath here. I didn't whip it out. I just paraphrased it. Mm-hmm. I said, her, she promised to maintain the, true prof- the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel, which is a 1611 King James Bible, because he knows that it's under a letter's patent in perpetuity. That is the law. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when he asked me for it, I said, well, you said it's your house, your rules, your regulations, so now how come you don't have one? I said, now that you brought, now that you mentioned that, now that means that the, uh, the witness's testimony is fraudulent, this court proceeding was fraudulent, and all these proceedings today have been fraudulent. He just confessed to treason. <laughs> now he can be hung. D- did you get a response from him? He didn't say anything. Oh, okay. So now, since it's an admiralty court, hmm. ask a consent and agreement. He didn't dispute anything I said. Okay. Yeah, he agreed. Mm-hmm. So then what happened was we were haggling over the Constitution and the Holy Tablet. I said, okay, Holy Tablet. I said, it's this thick. He said, oh, I don't care about the thickness. I just want to make sure that it's a proper instrument. I said, fine. I'll bring that. I said, let's pick a date and I'll bring the tablets. So <laughs> I skipped January. I said, no, I ain't trying to do little January or February. I said, let's do this after because they have the previous, uh, another BS case in March. So I was like, no, we're going to do this after March, ah. not before. <laughs> Got it. So every court, every court date that I pick, oh, he's not available. Duty counsel's not available. He's not available. Oh, not good for her. So then we first we went to February 7th. Then we went to the 14th. And then he said, you want to do this on the 14th? I said, of course. I said, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> So now he turned around and he was like, well, can I do? I said, he's like, I don't know if I'm available. Well, maybe I am. So then I turned because I heard people in the audience start snickering. Uh (laughs) And I turned around and I looked at them and I'm looking back at him and I'm sitting there shaking my head. And he sat up there for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. Mm Mm-hmm. But it was like a long time, and he's sitting there looking at the. And she had no problem with the fourteen. I said, "Okay, well, how about March fifth? How about or March seventh? How about these dates?" Um, well, we're getting past March, and this is further than what I was uh, intending. I don't have my calendar here. I have to go get my other calendar. Now, the duty council gave me the calendar for 2013 to the end of 2014. Mm-hmm. So when I talked to this brother in Brooklyn, he was like, yo, how could he, he was like, there's no way that he could have came up in there, right, Mm -hmm. and uh, not have his calendar, because they do that sometimes where they'll put a case off for a whole year, 12 months, 16 months. Right. They do stuff like that. So now how could he not have his calendar in the courtroom? So the brother was like, oh, he needed to get to his handler because he didn't, he said, you don't got him now in front of everybody. There's about 15 people, a couple of lawyers and whatnot. So they heard that. So I was like, okay. He went, when I brought up 1611, he bowed to that. And then I said, well, how could you be a queen's agent knowing this and then allowing her to get sworn in on a Bible that's not a 1611 King James? 